All right, this I think you're going to like, assuming it doesn't make you cry. Andrew Schultz is a comedian. I find him to be a pretty funny and smart guy. As far as I knew, he was not a Trump supporter, but interviewed Trump, and it's genuinely hilarious in spite of Trump or despite Trump. Uh, Trump was asked the question, what happened to Mike Pence? What happened to Mike Pence? And here is how Trump reacted to that question. I've taken what about that, Mike uh, Pence? You got anything for Mike Pence? Well, it's a shame because uh, he and I had a very good what relationship. Uh, Hanging out somewhere. He couldn't cross the line of doing what was right, in my opinion. Uh, Some yeah. people would disagree with that, but he had the right to go. Trump sees everything transactionally through the prism of what's good for him and are people just doing what he says. Even though Trump claims to support and defend the Constitution, even though Trump claims to be a supporter of law and order and blah, 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 and we'll get to law and order specifically a little bit later, the only thing that matters is he wanted Mike Pence to do a thing, and Mike Pence didn't do it. And that is the approach that ultimately makes Donald Trump so dangerous when you think about him sitting there at negotiating tables with whoever, whether, you know, it doesn't have to be Putin. I know that Putin is sort of the cartoonish example that's often given. But even with our Western democratic allies in Europe, the total lack of respect for institutions, treaties, agreements, or whatever the U.S. has entered into, simply because it might not be obviously convenient or pleasurable for him, is part of what makes the guy so dangerous. And even at this stage of the game, I don't, we've researched it a bunch of times. I have not found any examples of this level of overt hostility uh, between a former president and his former vice president, or even from the supporters of a former president in terms of hostility towards the former vice president of that president. And remember, hang Mike Pence is not exactly a, uh, a sign of love. Uh, Donald Trump talking about how he will weed out the Democrats. And it's very interesting language that he uses. Take a listen. We've challenged Stacey Abrams. Yeah. Uh, almost all of the Democrats challenge. Yeah. But when we challenge, they say he's a threat to democracy. Yeah. These are con artists and they're very bad for our country. Yeah. So I'm going to weed them out. <laughs> I'm going to weed them out. I'll do it in honor of you. This is another reference to Project 2025. Now, I know, I know we've heard it a million times. Trump doesn't know anything about Project 2025, some of the things in it he doesn't even like, and so on and so forth. We know about the number of Project 2025 people that are directly involved with Trump's campaign. Trump has praised the Heritage Foundation chair who developed uh, the um, uh, Project, 2020, Project 2025 framework many times. And of course, the most important thing is that Trump espouses beliefs that coincide directly with what's in Project 2025. And when Trump talks about weeding out Democrats, it's part of this bigger idea that they're going to take perfunctory career bureaucrats who are not acting in a politically partisan way and replace them with overtly partisan actors. Everybody must be fully and completely loyal to Donald Trump as he defines loyalty. Now, then we got to one of the most stunning aspects of what the Trump Republican Party has become. The topic of whether America is great came up. Now, I will be the first to tell you that I find this entire terminology squishy and almost meaningless. What does it mean to be a great country? Is it about our infrastructure? Is it about our systems? Is it about where people at an individual level are or aren't racist or inclusive or sexist? What is, what is greatness? Is it about opportunity? We can talk about that. But there has been a big change among Trump Republicans in terms of how they talk about the supposed greatness of this country. And it is very different from what we used to see among Republicans. Let's take a look at this video clip. Like my legacy to be is the same as the term MAGA, make America great again. I'm going to make this country great again. It's not a great country yeah. right now. It's loaded it's up. It's always a great country. It's a great country. See, that's it's always a great country. Okay, but the Republicans of the George W. Bush era would have crushed and ostracized anyone who said something like this. Remember, under Bush, it was America's great. This is the best country, and it's always been the best. And it doesn't mean that we believe that or we think that that way of talking about countries even makes sense. 
but there was something about Republicans 20 years ago where they weren't willing to stoop so low as to say the country sucks just because the person that they voted for might not be president. They weren't willing to do that. Now, you might say I'm kind of pa painting a rose-colored picture of Republicanism under George W. Bush. No, listen, I disagreed with tax policy, disagreed with education policy, disagreed with foreign policy. That, that's not what I'm doing. But what I am saying is that there were certain things where, listen, if you do want the country to do well and you have a difference of opinion when it comes to some policy and you happen to have lost an election, you don't go out and say the country sucks. You say, I think the country could have systems that work better or different policies or whatever. And, and that is just, they've moved on from that. Now it's the country straight up sucks. And then finally during this interview, Trump defending his complete and total incoherence with this new phrase he's developed, the weave. When Trump does his borderline dementia rants, where he's going into one topic and another topic and none of it makes any sense. Trump now has started to describe this as doing the weave, where he masterfully weaves together different stories, anecdotes, and ideas. And he tries to explain it to Andrew Schultz. And I don't think it comes off that impressively. Take a look. And uh, so it's one of those things. I was saying before, though, that, you know, I do a thing called the weave. Yeah. And there are those that are fair that say, this guy is so genius. And then others would say, oh, he rambled. I don't ramble. If I saw the story, yeah. what you do is you weave things and you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have certain things. You need an, you need an extraordinary memory because you have to come back to where you started. Yes. You always, a weave is only good they if you come back. They would give you credit back. for that. That's <laughs> yeah, true. Then you could go no. all the way over here and then I get back. I can go so far here or there. <laughs> and I can come back to exactly where I started. Yeah, so listen, it's up to you to decide. When it sounds like Trump is ranting incoherently, is he ranting incoherently or are your eyes and ears deceiving you? And it's actually some brilliant rhetorical tool that Trump has figured out. I'm on the it's genuinely incoherent sort of side of the fence, uh, but you can decide for yourself. Donald Trump has made it clear in a truth social post that if he gets elected, he will prosecute people in response to imaginary voter fraud using the Justice Department as his personal tool for revenge. And it's crazy how conservative news outlets are framing this story, like this headline from Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire, which says Governor Burgum defends Trump against leftist outrage over his demand for fair elections. Meanwhile, when independent media outlet Mother Jones is reporting on the same story, their headline is the Trump plan to prosecute election officials and suppress the vote. So you get a totally different idea of the story depending on who's reporting it. Our sponsor, Ground News, makes it really easy to see these differences. For every news story, Ground News shows me a breakdown of how each outlet is framing the story who owns the outlet, what their political bias is, so you can make up your own mind. I can also follow Ground News' dedicated 2024 presidential election page for each candidate, which is an amazing tool right now just to sort out fact from fiction on the race. And my viewers get 40 percent off the same unlimited access vantage plan that I use. When you go to ground.news slash Pacman, the link is in the description.